All right, Coach, we're good to go. Hey, guys, good to be here again, and uh, looking forward to seeing everybody at camp. And uh, I just know that it's worth your time. If you're still thinking about it, you also can do the consultant thing and get us out there to try to help you. If it's one-on-one, -on -one, whatever you need, we'll be ready to help you. We're going we're gonna, to – it won't be a very long presentation tonight because we're just rebuffing the ideas of what protections we need and some of the changes we have going on right now. I posted Rio Lobo protection. You know, Rio Lobo started out as a true slide protection, turn the end man on the line of scrimmage loose, the back takes him, quarterback gets rid of the ball really fast. Rio Lobo is now evolving, and, and like Drew said, there's only, there's, only, uh, there's only two states in the country that play by the NCAA rules, and that's Massachusetts and Texas. Everybody else plays federation rules where you can't cut below the waist. So some of these things that, that UCLA is doing now directly correspond to what you guys are doing, what you need to do to, to make an adjustment. Instead of putting that back, having to take a defensive end that might be 230, 240 pounds in high school above the waist, we're just going to match up the big guy on the big on the back side and then slide the protection. And basically what we're talking about when we do that is ram lion protection. Okay. So Rio Lobo has turned, and we're going to keep the word Rio Lobo, and we're going to start to move away from talking about ram and lion protection because Rio Lobo now will encompass part of that. Okay, so how do we do Rio Lobo when we're vertical setting? All right, well, it's simple. You know, a vertical set's a four-step drop, and we're trying to get toes over toes, nose over nose, you know, nose slightly inside their nose, actually, so we keep inside leverage. We're just going to cover them up in two steps. It's fast and furious. And what will happen now is the back, if it's a Rio protection and we're sliding right, first uncovered lineman starts to slide, and the back is going to look backside backer to edge. Okay, so he's on the scan away from the Rio. He goes left, and he's got the backside linebacker to outside the tackle. And we're just going to fit him in against a guy his size a little better. So we're going to show you old, older footage of the old Rio Lobo, but we're going to talk you through how we lock that backside tackle on. So basically, the way we did Rio Lobo was shuffle hard two steps inside, but if you were covered, you had to post. Like if you had a three technique, you would post with your um, outside arm and slide to your gap. We were trying to slow the free shot where that guy didn't run straight up the field waiting for the outside offensive player to come down and close the gap. So basically now what we're telling you is we're covering up, but we're using two steps, one, two, and we're trying to get our toes over and into our gap, toes over their toes, and we're getting in a fist fight as fast as we can, as firm as we can on the line of scrimmage. All right? And this is probably just, as you see how this will evolve, uh, some coaches have already done it. Like Drew said, he had already made that adjustment at Ramapo, and, and now you'll see UCLA starting to do it, and we'll talk you through it. So I just wanted to show you guys the sheet. Um, it's on our website, the Rio Lobo Protection, turn to the first defender, uh, you know, toward the call. It's just a, it's a gap slide protection is all it's been. And the backside tackle now will lock on, and the back will scan backside backer to edge. So what we'll do here, we're going to go back to our huddle account. And I pulled up a bunch of Rio Lobos. And we'll kind of talk you through it. You know, we can look at what the defense is here. Let me just make sure. Okay, we got an over defense. I'm going to blow this up, blow the screen up, and we'll talk through it. Okay, we got a four-man front, okay? Now, here we go. The back is going, boom, fitting to our side over here. So now the back is just going to scan inside backer to edge. We're covered, and now the slide will turn away. These three are covered by these three here. One, two, three. The back will step in, edge to edge, I mean, inside backer to edge, and then he'll release in the route. It's just real protection. Ball's out fast. 
Now you can tell here they do a pretty good job at covering it up. They've got a nice three yard cushion and that's why we're firm in the front. That's what we're looking for right there to get rid of the ball. So as we look at this, and we'll rewind it again. Oop, let's erase that. Hey, Coach, we got our first questions in. I'm going to throw them out as we go. Okay, Coach, so when vertical setting, does the guard ever dual read and use a molly-like technique to block the defender on the outside yep. tackle? Molly is Ron Lou protection only. Okay. This is a slide protection, okay? So basically we're saying it's big on big right here, and the slide starts here. The right guard in this protection right here, I'm trying to erase that. Okay. I'm the right guard. He would post the inside shade, but he's looking at the backer, right? Because it's four down to the will, the way we talk about ram line, and that's basically what we're talking about here. We call it Rio Lobo because we've eliminated ram lion now. So here start the first uncovered lineman is the center. He starts the slide. He slides to the right. Okay, two steps. One, two. He's over. Now, he's got a post, so he's going to step with his outside foot and reset with the inside foot. He's going to hold point. He looks at the will. The will doesn't come. He gets outside and gets aggressive. We get two right there. The center covers him up. And then we're firm right here. Two steps. So he would vertical one, two. He'd be setting right there at the new line of scrimmage. I hope that explains that question. Fire him away as we go. Yeah, what's what's the depth the O-line is getting on the, the two-step vertical set, they say? It, uh, not No more than a yard. It's it's too, fa too fast. Boom, boom. All we're trying to do is slide and cover him up. There's no, there's no, we don't want depth because this guy's catching, ripping, and throwing, right? So we've got to set our pocket in front of him. He sets up at five. If we if we get a yard deep, there's four yards to work with. It gives me one yard cushion to absorb a blow and get the ball out. <laughs> Good questions. So the next one. Oh, we'll get, oh, I had the end zone. Sorry, we'll make sure we get the end zone on this one here. Boom. Okay, only difference now is what we're telling you is, because of what you guys have to do, he's now locked on, which means if he's locked on, he's covered, he's locked on. Slide starts here. Slide, post and slide, boom, slide. Triangle's right here. He's the indicator. He's the will. He's got edge to edge. He doesn't come. He comes outside right now and looks for pressure. We're trying to get our toes over their toes so we can absorb the blow and cover them up. And even if we got pushed back, he's got to go through us. No free shot on the quarterback. Like that. Rewind that back. Okay, let's look at the end zone. Now, I don't think there's one guy in this on this webinar right now that likes that matchup, right? That's why we fixed it. That's why we've got it now where we're going to keep our big on our big. He'll cover it up. I'm going to draw it better because I'm going to show you what the steps look like. One, two. We know he's coming. We've got him covered up. He'd go straight back. One, two. He's covered up. Okay? Now the slide starts with the first uncovered lineman. That's him. He's sliding over. One, two. Okay? He's coming straight back in his cylinder, posting his inside hand. His eyes are looking at the will. He comes straight back. One, two. He's coming for you. And catch and rip and get the ball out. So the only thing I didn't like how I drew was the center right there. I wish I would. I'm going to just show you how it looked. He goes one, two. And he's trying to absorb it, knowing that he's got his body to protect him right there. Okay? Boom. Covering him up. Firm protection. We want to give a yard. Okay? I hope that's a good picture. We're going to keep rolling because I think a picture's worth a million words. It is, Coach. When, when is, I got different when, fronts in here, too. I made sure I got a whole bunch of different looks for us. Cool. So when is Rio Lobo used rather than Ron Liu? Rio Lobo is our three-step. It's all the 90 stuff. Got it. Okay. Okay. And Ron Lou is all your drop back. So this, so Rio Lobo is our quick game. 
Now, there's another way you can use Rio Lobo. If I'm getting hammered with blitzes, and I've adjusted in the middle of a game and use Rio Lobo trying to get maybe a curl or a dig off, you know what I mean, 10-yard route, because I can't handle the pressure inside, all right? Mm -hmm. Remember, all we've done with Rio Lobo now is turned it into Ram line. This is Ram protection, right? The line goes right. We just shortened instead of a four-step drop, we're just in our cylinders. We're playing fast, covering them up quick, and he's scanning. No backer in here. He's got pressure outside, right? Mm -hmm. So it's all we've turned it into, and this slide starts with the uncovered lineman. Boom. Now, the key is this guy. You want to know the key to all the protections. He's got an uncovered look. He's coming to cover him up. He stays in his cylinder. What happens in high school all the time is, okay, he thinks he's slide, he thinks he's slide, he thinks he's slide. Well, that guy's got a hell of a shot to getting over the top of the guy with the ball in his hand. All right? So we're not going to let that happen. He stays in his cylinders. He keeps his body, but his eyes never look at the down lineman. He is the indicator. He is the indicator. He tells me everything I need to know. If he drops, now I'm going to go into the game knowing this is the beast. You're on an island, dude. You're going to handle that. If that guy drops, I'm coming back and helping on this guy. We're going to put two on the better player. All right? But he also has the eyes to see this. If he's wide, I don't feel this threat right now. I think everybody's with me. He's awfully wide, right? He's, that's an indicator. But if he had been right here, I'm looking at squeeze and scrape. So as soon as he comes, I, ab I abort now. It's one, two, and I'm going to get my eyes out here. He went. I trigger with him because I know if he went there, somebody's coming inside. He'll stay in his box, and he'll just take that off outside as it comes. He'll ride. This right tackle will ride this guy as long as he can. Now we see that go. He will bump, and it should come off just like that. Boom. What, what, if, the, what if the mic shoots the A-gap on the center? The mic right here? Yeah. If he shot the A-gap on the center, well, that, that, they'd have to do that. Okay. All right? So that's why he stays in his cylinder. If he crosses his face and the indicator comes, that, this is, these are great questions, okay? This is why I teach you the vertical set, all right? And, and I hope everybody hears that. If I'm getting depth, even if it's one yard, okay, that guy triggers. I got one step in the ground. I got my second step down quick. As soon as he triggers, I'm falling. I'm back on that guy heavy. Now here comes this guy because he's going back. So I'm in a great position to cover my guy up. My center's eyes come over. If that guy runs around him, dude, he knows the rat, there's something coming. He sits right in the hole, picks it off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will interject and tell everybody, if you've not been in, we've updated the, um, the position play on the website for O-Line. We've, we've taken Coach Peavy's stuff and packaged it up in there, and there's about two hours on vertical setting. So... Make sure you guys get in there and take a look at that. It's very in-depth. Um, the guys who have never vertical set it, I'm just going to tell you something. I am old school. I was a wishbone guy, all right? I was a slot. I was a real Lobo wishbone guy because, Nate, that's what we did, right? Yep, that's all what we did. protection, all right? Yep. Or you fired out and had to hit the ground before the ball came out. I mean, that's, so I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a dinosaur when it comes to this. I converted to this. Because I had some really crappy players at William Patterson. You know who that is, right, Drew? <laughs> Absolutely. All right. And I had less players, right? These guys these guys right here at Rowan, when I played those guys, transferred from Maryland. Okay? Transferred from <laughs> Rutgers. Transferred from Temple. Guess what I had? I had Willie P specials. All right? They couldn't match up. All right. Coach, you gotta get out and recruit. Yeah, and so and let me tell you something, Nate, about recruiting. I was in the streets of Patterson. How safe was I, Drew? Not very yeah. safe. At 11 o'clock at night, I was the only white guy on the street hanging out trying to get kids that never went to college because I could get them into school. So I did my best, I promise. So I was the only, I'm telling you, I took a guy named Lou Mathis with me. You know Lou, Drew? I do. Yes, I do. He's a piece of work, isn't he? He, he brought me on to some great players that have played before. And I was working to get him in. So that's that's kind of what we were doing. So here's here's the deal. If you have lesser players, you can't be any better coach. You can't go grow them. 
So you better have a new answer in the file. So here's what happens. I realize this. If I could get that, even if that guy would push me straight back, I had a shot at getting that ball out. All right? What happens when you're a firm set team like the NFL, if that guy does that move right here, that is a booger bear. You can't do that with a lesser athlete. So movement killed us, all right? So here's what I said. Okay, well, let's back up away from the movement. Boy, that helped me a bunch. It gave me a chance to get the ball out. I had to make sure he took a drop, you know what I mean, to get back and keep my cushion because sometimes I didn't get enough depth. But I now gave my guys a chance by getting depth and covering them up. It goes back to the presentation, the guys who saw me on, on, at any clinic this year. Number one, cause of sacks. What is it? The NFL study says didn't cover them up. Number one cause is they let that guy get on the edge because I couldn't get my toes over his toes. That's the number one cause. Number two, missed assignments. Well, guess what? When I was at Willie P, what else did I have? I just told you where I got my players. I didn't go to college. I got them off the streets of... I got them off the streets of uh, Patterson, so they weren't uh, football textbooks. They, they weren't the smartest guys. They were great kids and great football players. So I had to have a scheme. When my next job, I said, "I'll never let that crap happen to me again." So this is how we all. This is how I fell into all this stuff. You know what I mean? And it was an accident because I used to be a kick set guy. Okay, number one twit. Here, here's a booger. This, this, he moves here. He comes here. That stunt right there. That's a tough stunt, okay? If you're teaching kick set, you're teaching to cover him up. He's getting depth, and they're not playing on the same plane. Everybody with me on that? Because I try to cover him, playing the NFL style, he gets depth. The only answer I got is to mirror that back to the inside. Well, that looks stupid. I tried that at Rhode Island. I was a bad coach. But guess what? When I got these two guys on the same plane, all right? and I'm covering him up, and he's working away from me. I smelled the rat. He had time to bang it back, and I covered him up again. Lesser players can cover guys up. They might get driven, but guess what? He ain't getting stroked. Every time he gets hit, we gotta. if I get three of those on him, we're in trouble, right? Three strikes, you're out. So we don't want him hit. That was my number one goal. Next play. All right, coach. What if the what if the mic shoots the other the opposite end down? You want me to go back? I'll go back. Yeah. That's... What if the mic goes back to where you go? Okay. If he goes from there to there. Yeah. Have you seen that? I don't know. I that's the question. That I got that question in here, so right. somebody. Okay, let's go through it. One, two, three, have one, two, three. For him to go there, he's going to void. Okay, so he's coming back. He sets, he's looking at that guy, he just slides with him and covers him up. Okay. These, three, these three guys, one, two, three, have one, two, three. Okay, now guess what? What happens in a stunt is if he goes here and he goes there, he was one, he was two. When he comes inside, he now becomes one, and he became two, and he's three. Everybody with me? Mm -hmm. So we set one, two, three. It's simple. If he goes and wants to shake the ref's hand, guess what? That, that center is going to sit right there and wait for him to come forward. All right, the next one was, how, how do you anchor when taking two vertical sets? How do you coach it up? Because, remember, the vertical set is a vertical drift. Okay, let's go. We'll get to the end zone of this one right here. Let's go to the end sure. zone. Sure. Okay. Almost the same. Look, they just went over instead of under. Okay? So here we go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go one, two. I'm in cement. I got my outside foot down. You can't ask for a better thing than that. My, my foot's in concrete right there. I'm setting my wedge right there. Right when that second step down is as deep as I want to be. So I went one, two. Vertical set means move the inside set first. It doesn't mean you're coming straight back here. Because the thing about a vertical set is there's a vertical drift. If you, re, if you watch the webinar or the, or the 
president, whiteboards are done. All, all right. All protection starts with a cylinder. These guys all have a cylinder, okay? I think everybody understands what I'm talking about right here. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, here's the thing. Cylinders move. All right. My cylinder has to come over here to cover that guy up. So now my cylinder is here. Okay, my cylinder moved. I'm trying to get in a position where I can cover him up. Okay, now this guy's cylinder doesn't move. He's coming straight back because his cylinder moved. So he can get in the position to help the center. His cylinder moves. We play in cylinders, man. One foot's always in the cylinder until I got to go. So even though this is my original cylinder, watch this. This is my original cylinder. Everybody get me? I'm going to move this foot first. So I go one, and my second foot moves outside the cylinder because I'm trying to get in a position to cover him up. Now, we know this guy's not rushing like this because he would run into the goalpost. What we know is he's trying to get the edge to get to what? The goose with the golden egg, okay? He's trying to get the edge. My job is to get in the position that I can best cover him up, and when he turns, I center him up. I'm in a great position because I moved my cylinder. He, you know, he's coming there. All right? He stayed square. Now, here's the deal with the center. The slide starts with the first uncovered lineman. There's the slide. He's coming inside. We've got one, two, three, and he's, got, he's coming over for his guy. Now, if one drops, the center now knows who is the most dangerous guy. Is this guy the best football player or is this? I'll know going into the game. I'm going to tell him, hey, listen, stay in your cylinder as long as you can, but I know the right guard can come over and cover him, and I want you working to the three technique because that guy's a bear. So we'll stay in our cylinder, and then we're going to leave. As soon as he leaves, I can leave. Okay, if he sits, I'll stay in my cylinder and wait because I'm not sure – you know, am I getting this? If that happens, and I'm, if I'm the center, my guy triggers, my eyes trigger with him. They went outside. Here he comes. I'll bump him. Then he'll bump him, and we stay firm. Does that make sense? It does. And we, we got a lot of questions, Coach, so I hope you're okay if I just keep throwing them out. Yeah, fire so away, man. The next one's a little long. Let me read through it so you have the whole, whole shot of it. It says, Ron Lou blocking rules against a 4-2 box with weak side linebacker in a walk alignment, and three three, and then they, they would also like to see a 3-3 three, three stack with a walk alignment. And here's what they say. The rules in the okay. ASU playbook say... Let me just tell whoever sure. wrote that question. Uh, I, are you married? <laughs> I'm, I got everything covered here. I'm going to get to the 3-3 three, three stack and the 3-2. I told you I have every, every, every front. Cool. But I got to be able to get through one without any questions before I can move to the next one. All right, here we go. I got two linebackers. It's a 4-2 front. Amazing. Yeah, that's why I'm running up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so stay with me. I got. I tell you, I got 50 fronts. I got everything in here. Cool. He had the 4-2 front. Where do you have the weak backer? He had, you know, in a in a walk alignment. This right here. That's, uh, where, that's where he had him. Or do you have him on the other side? Coach Boyd, where'd you have that? Uh, your weak side. Hey, Coach Boyd, you there? You on your mic? No, he's not hey, answering. Coach Boyd, I bought. I ah, go on the next one. We'll get you in a minute. All right. I might see a new front. <laughs> okay. Guess what? Coach Boyd, look at that. 3-3 three, three stack right there, baby. 3-2, <laughs> actually. They slid it. All right, here we go. So we're going to use the same concept. Tackle's on. The backer will fill edge to edge. Okay? And the slide starts with the first uncovered lineman. So now I got four for one, two, three, four. Okay? We know. Everybody see that right there? exactly what happens. We wad it up, balls out. Coach Sassman, I know you're impressed that I had a 3-3 stack after that call right there, buddy. Here we go. Just got to stay go. with Jack. 
Hey, the old saying is sleep at night. I'm on fire right now, baby. <laughs> Here we go. Look, this is why I love a vertical set. He's cheated. I smell a rat. I got my first step inside. I'm covering him up. Boom. All right. He's looking for anything in here to edge. Slide starts with him. He takes half a man, but guess where his eyes are, dudes? They're over here. Okay? These two got these two. These two got these two. These two got these two. Okay, not a very good line. I'm going to fix that for you. But basically, I'm telling you, he's uncovered. He's sliding hard. He went one to his crotch, two over. He's in a four eye. I smell a rat. I got one back, two back. I stayed in my cylinder because I'm covered. But guess what? I'm looking at that backer right there if I'm these two guys because that guy tells me what's going to happen. If he comes, he aborts, and he goes there, and he comes over and goes there. Okay? If he does that, I got him covered. I come back with him. Boom, I'm setting the trap. I'm sitting in the hole. All right, now we got a stack situation here. I stayed in my cylinder. My first step's there. My second step's there because I'm sliding to the Rio. I'm coming over hard. All right, but guess who's the indicator? He is. He goes there. He goes there. I got him covered. I got him covered. The backers tell you the story. Okay? If he drops, boom, guess what? I got work. He's by himself. I got this guy free to go whatever guy I want to go to. He can go here or here. Okay? I'm going to help the guy who needs the help. Against a 4 eye, I'd be more likely to help him here, though, just so you know. Because I got a slide coming this way, and I got a back that can fill gap to gap. And he's got here. Boom. All right? Make sense? Yep. Coach, would you would okay. you use Rio Noble for play action, play action Pro? Well, basically, that's what I told you in the beginning, and I know that's a good question because the words are a little different. But act ram, act lion, if, if, if we evolve with this, we're going to take ram and lion out, and we're going to start using 812 and 813. But Rio Lobo is now act ram, act lion. That's basically nice. what's happening. And it's all due to what Drew said. Drew said, nice. before you guys all got on, we used to leave that guy for the back. I want a big on a big. I learned that in the NFL. Big on big. That's all we try to do in protections, okay? We try to put our big guys on their big guys. We try to put backs on backers, all right? And if we felt there was a mismatch, then we changed the protection. You know what I mean? If that was this was Andre Tippett, guess what? We're sliding Andre Tippett every time because that guy was a beast when I played. Or Lawrence Taylor or whoever. So we want bigs on bigs, and we just – decided like like when in the in the college you can cut that guy but even if you can it should be a change up if that guy is a great player all right here's what I did against a great player the first four plays that guy was going to get hit four different ways so I might run slice whack him that way okay I just trap him I just send everybody over and I slice them okay the next time I might run I'd call it slip protection okay act slip so I'd go here, 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 and that's how I'd get him. I got him one time. The next time, we could go Lobo, okay? If we did the old Lobo, I would do this, and I would put him on. All right? The next time I did something, I would set him straight back, and I'd big on big him. All right? And the next time, I might bring him in motion, and I might whack him one time. I'm going to slow the best player in the field down. And if that guy was a stud, I'm not going to let him tee off on my lesser guy. That's just not what I did, ever. I had, to slow, I had to take his stinger off. If he was the best player, he was going to get hit. He might get auctioned. He might get keyed. All right? He might get ISOed. I got a lot of different ways to control different guys. But you have to have a package that tells you how you're going to take the best player out of the game. You can't line up and say, oh, my man's going to whoop him. That ain't going to happen. And then basically, we're in, we learned that lesson with Noel against Stanford. All right? His first game... He tried to zone block, and you saw the results. Didn't even rush for 100 yards. Second time, he gap blocked them. And guess what? He ran the crap out of the football and gave himself a chance to win the game. All right? So you got to have two ways to skin the cat. That's all. That's, and, and the same thing with protection. All right? It would be a very easy adjustment for me to say the very first Lobo, I'm going to slide it, and I'm just going to put my back on him. And then for after that, guys, we're just going to lock up and do our thing, okay? But I just want him to know I can do that. There's no there's no harm, no foul in that thing. But if that guy just keeps teeing off every time I'm in shotgun and it's a pass situation, I'm not going to win very many of those. 
So that's how I look at it. So act rim and act line basically is Rio Rio Lobo. Okay, new front. Okay, still in the three man family. That's a four one right there. Okay, four two box again. Okay, we already had that. If we're in Lobo, right? He's on, he slides, he slides, he slides, he slides. No big deal. If we were in Rio, okay, he now is on that guy. He's there, right? He's checking inside back of the edge. He's got him. He stays in his cylinder. He's the indicator. Bam. He drops. I look for work. He comes. I look to help out that to slide it over. Pretty simple stuff. If the whole idea of playing fast is keep it simple, right? So by getting rid of act, act, you know, tying Rio Lobo into act ram, act lion is really good for us. You know, I was thinking, Jack, too, while we're doing this, when we do that clinic on June 27th at Widener, we can do uh, walkthroughs with the O-line guys on all this. Yeah, I'd love to have walkthrough with O-line coach. I think it's really good. And then I will, we'll film it and we'll put it up. And, and what was the name of that coach that asked me about the fronts? Coach Doug? Doug. Sorry, I'm muted talking to myself back here. It was Coach Boyd. Uh, it was Coach Boyd. Where is he from? Coach Boyd is, um, let me think here for a second. Not 100% sure. I, I hope think he can I, come to the clinic. That's what I was going to say because, Nate, what we need to do, too, is try to have a blitz book printed up for these guys at the clinic. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, we could do yeah. that. And yeah, we'll walk, I, I that. we'll walk through the blitz book. We're just going to walk through blitzes when we do the protection at the clinic. So, yeah, hopefully yeah. Coach can come to that. Yeah, maybe, maybe. maybe. I, think it's a long, I think it's a long drive from him from Hawaii, so. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, Coach Boyd's in Hawaii. Jack, you may just have to go out there and help him. Uh, I'm going to volunteer to go help Coach Boyd anytime without my wife that he will take me. You're going to trade him my ties for that one? <laughs> All right, good. Hey, um, I do want Drew to get a chance to present a little bit on what they did at Ramapo. Um, go ahead, Drew. Whatever you got, Drew can go. Yeah, let's let Drew go, and then we'll we'll just finish up with some Q&A. Um, All right, hang on, Coach. You, got it. Trade that. Doug, you want to pop that over to my screen? Yep, it's ready for you, Coach. You should be able to click it. And and as Jack was saying, the um, the, Ram, the Ram Lion protection or Rio Lobo, whatever you want to call it, for us, that's that's the base. That was our base look. We used the Ram and Lion scheme to block any drop back pass out of our two by two formation. We changed the name, gave it another R and L name, so the kids would know it was Quick Game in the '90s. And now our guys just set firmer, but it was still Ram Lion scheme. We used the Ram Lion scheme for our act protection, and we used the Ram Lion scheme for our hustle protection, which is our stretch play action. So for us, we got a ton out of Ram and Lion. Um, and and again, Ram and Lion really is exactly what Jack talked about in terms of Rio and Lobo. Um, so we use it, in the, you know, when we introduce it to our kids, we introduce it for the drop back game out of our two by two formation. Uh, for us, it's a slide protection from the first uncovered center or backside guard. And Ram and Lion, for us, always has the back on a dual read. The quarterback would call the protection away from the back. The back would align based on pass route. But our general rule is in trio, he's away from the trips and in dual, he's to the Y side. Um, we did it from four down perspective. We're going to sort it out from the center to the front side versus a three down. It was from the backside guard. We asked our backside guard to make a three call or a four call based on whether he was covered or uncovered, just so we would know how many guys um, were involved in the slide. And then finally, we all talked to our kids about something we call the pizza principle. And uh, that's how we bump our twists and cross blitzes Basically, tell them if somebody takes a piece of your pizza, you know, you're going to take theirs. So that's our, our bump concept with the uh, Ram and Lion protection. Um, so we break down fronts based on 4-3, on which we call ace, 
Oki, which is a three down look, and then even, which is the four two look. So in the upper left hand corner, um, and again, this is basically exactly what Jack covered. Um, we have a three man slide against a, a single middle linebacker or a four three look. The center's got the A gap. The guard's going to give presence to the A gap with his eyes in the B, and then the tackle's got the C gap rusher. From there, our tailback's going to have a dual read inside linebacker to outside linebacker, and we're big on big on the back side. So if this is ram protection, a three-man slide to the right, big on big to the left, back has the dual read. Um, one of the things that was good for us this year with our tackles up in a two-point stance, um, they were able to see what was going on. So anytime you know we were covered as an offensive tackle and we had an edge blitz showing, Okay, we would make an alert call, and that we did that in our Zorro game. If you're on the front side, uh, we did that on our our Shark game. If you're on the front side, whenever you had an edge blitz, you would make an alert call. And now the center would answer east, and now each of these guys would know. Hey, we're expecting an edge blitz. We're expecting somebody to cross face and get in your inside gap. And again, anytime we got the the, the east call, the tailback would know he would still have his dual read. And our quarterback knew that this was a, a drop back game. If both of these guys came, he would be hot, all right. But now we would expect them to, to show a blitz, probably be in a zero coverage. But he would know he'd have to get the ball off quickly if both guys came on the blitz. Uh, when we saw the three down front, which we call Oki, now the backside guard on Ram makes a four call. It's a four man slide. And now the left guard and center are reading nose to, to this Oki backer. And the right guard and the right tackle are read and tackle to, to outside linebacker. And again, the back has the dual read situation there. Um, front side edge pressure, front side tackle's covered. Now he's going to make that alert call. The center answers east, and we get our four man slide. And again, the back has his dual read. So we did exactly the same thing that, that Jack is doing. We did it from a, uh, without a vertical set. Uh, our guys were, were a kick slide team because that was what our offensive line coach was, was most comfortable with teaching. You know, he does a great job with that. That's the system he played under, and uh, you know, he just felt that was his comfort level, and, and we worked very hard at it. Just switched to the end zone system last year. That's what our guys had been doing for four years. Um, we had a, an all-senior offensive line, so we didn't make the change to the vertical set, although you know, when, when you hear Jack present it, you see what a Great job he does with it, and how much sense it makes. I, 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 right there, Drew, it, it, and I, it knows the same way. If you if your guys are comfortable, I just know the spring. When you have spring ball, it's a great time to get to try to introduce some of it. You know what I mean, and and see what they can do. It's hard to do otherwise, I would say. Absolutely, that's, that's, that's going to say. Summer, you've got to use that time. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, Drew. If you could, I mean, guys are looking at this, and I know there's colleges using this exact same protection, but you don't have spring football. So kind of, you know, take us through. Are you guys doing like O-line, you know, school in like Feb, March, April, and then getting out on the field in summer and before you even start your fall camp? And New Jersey rules, we cannot do any football with our kids till after June 9th. So uh, we'll basically be, a, you know, a two-day-a-week practice team from, from June 9th on. And, uh, and we get it taught. You know, we're, we're out there two days a week from June 9th. We have a, a week of uh, a camp in the middle of the summer for our kids. Um, we're, we're in there five days, and then we have a dead period for a week, and, and then we report to, to training camp. So we're able to get it done in that time period. Um, for us, it, it's worked pretty well. Do you guys do blitz pickup during your practice sessions? Every day. Every yeah. day. We, we got to a ram and lion protection was usually on our Tuesday practices, um, and then Ron and Lou was more on our Wednesday practices. So we got like introduced and taught because we're throwing dual passing game on a, on a Tuesday. We're throwing our trio passing game on a Wednesday. So um, that's how we broke it down. Monday we would we'd spend a little more time on screens and any special game plan stuff we're expecting on a Monday, and, uh, and we kind of – Review it all on, on Thursday in, in our pregame walkthrough. <laughs> Drew, Ramapo High School is not paying you enough. You're damn right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Doug, what's the next questions? 
Let's see here. Any questions coming out for uh, Drew's part of it? Uh, no, I didn't see any any come through during during Drew's. I did see um, uh, Coach of Any's asking if there's if there's you guys could give some coaching detail points on techniques used um, in other sets, like things like you be extra firm on ninety passes, stuff like that. I will say, Coach of Any, if you do drop in, I don't know if you looked at some of the um, position specific stuff that we have for O line, but like I said last week, we just added a couple of items to that that will go over a lot of it. Um, Coach uh, Coach Peavy did a great job of speaking specifically on quite a few. I'm not sure if just on 90 he talked, but um, he has quite a few. So he said he's seen it. So um, Coach Peavy, so maybe you can help us out for coaching points um, on play action specifically. Maybe how the play what technique should they use? It's more aggressive than real Lobo. Because it's not a slide now, you know what I mean? It's it's not a it, it's no vertical part to it. You know what I mean? Rio Lobo is we're showing our hand, we're passing the football. So there's a run fit, and then you pull out of it. So it's like almost like a jump set, and it's exactly the same as Rio Lobo. It's, it it couldn't be any different except there's a ball fake to the back. You know what I mean? We just got to sell. We have to have low hats. Safeties mm -hmm. read low hats. Hats are down. And then we, and then it all fits, you know. So it, it's it really the only difference when we act, when we say act ram, which really, like Noel told me to tell everybody, he wished they'd start saying eight twelve and eight thirteen, because he doesn't want it to even sound like a protection when it's a, it's got a, it's got a run feel to it. Okay. All right, we would call that Jack. You no, know, so if we're going act ram, we would just call that. Uh, act even for us, and our linemen yes. would know that would be this diagram here. It's act even. The center is aggressive in the A gap. The guard's aggressive in the B, and the back is taking his, his handoff fake, and then he's reading it like it's a cutback zone play. He's got his dual read will, you know, inside out, whatever you call those linebackers, and um, that works pretty well for us, and you can be real aggressive on the front side with that. Noel's using, you know, hustle even and odd, too. You know what I mean? That's how he's doing that, too. He's trying to get in his play action. He's just looking for some more numbers. He would call hustle 9, 12, 9, 13. Right. Mm. If we were going to go hustle odd, we were going to fake the stretch to the left. Our guys know that that left stretch hustle odd is ram protection. So now the tailback is taking his fake across, and now he's in good position to read inside, outside backer on the stretch fake. So, um, again, we use ram you know, you got ramp protection basically being used on your hustle, on your act, and on your two and two drop back, and your quick game. That's good. All right, the other question we hey, had. Do you, do you, do you draw these slides up, or you have some uh, guy on your team that's technologically savvy there? This was uh, this was how I spent my summer vacation. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, Drew. Drew is about two levels below where he should be coaching. I mean, that guy could be in the pros. Good stuff, man. It's good, stuff. good stuff. That's good stuff, Drew. That's why you want it all, bro. So here's another question that came in. Um, we've got two more coming in here. So uh, who we have here? Coach Campbell. Hey, Drew, what or did Coach you Brad? use for your playbook? We uh, Playmaker Pro? I have an old version of Playmaker Pro um, that we use. And then we copy the Playmaker Pro over to, it takes a few steps, and, and Bobby and I, uh, Bobby Acosta and I went over this, and he helped me out with a little bit too. But we take it from Playmaker to PowerPoint, and then we put the PowerPoints up on Huddle. So now all our kids have the playbook on Huddle. That's how they, that's how they view the playbook. We didn't give out uh, paper playbooks this year. Yeah, that, and um. the colleges aren't anymore either. That's, that's awesome. Drew, hey, how many hours do you think you spent last summer since you bought the system, you know, working on it. Oh boy, a couple hundred. I mean, we spent a lot of time, and you know, yeah, it's all there in the system for you. But for it to make sense to me, I, you know, it took a lot of time, and and, and we looked at it, you know, every which way to to get it figured out and, and make it work for our kids. Yeah, that's what I figured. I figured a couple hundred hours because you know it cold. All right, Doug. What's the next question? So, on, coach, on a poker call, how is bet? How is back asked to read from call to backside? Sorry. Poker calls five all box, man. We back's got edge to edge. Okay. 
And then Coach Pelpierre is asking us for examples against the 10-1. What would you guys do against the 10-1? Uh, Laugh. Laugh. <laughs> Throw a T. Throw a T. <laughs> man to man. High school man to man. Good luck, duck. <laughs> Keep in front find, of you, find one of your guys. Find one of your guys who's better than their guys, and, and that's the Amen. guy who's the ball. I like that. Nate, do we want to hit a little bit of Ron Lou? Hey, Nate. Check that out. Hey, to answer that question, though, the, you know, the 10-1 the system, the Texas 10 or whatever, that's, that's the old wide tackle gap bait crap that Georgia ran, I think. So it's just a 4-4 box, you know what I mean? They're just walking on backers. So that 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 doesn't really affect me. You know, the only thing you can get out of that is a squeeze call, which does force the back onto the defensive end to that side of the squeeze. Hmm. So pressure, if, if you're calling plays and you're afraid of pressure, you need to go coach defense and pressure people because, to me, that's what it's all about. The guys that can beat blitzes and have the answers is, is how, you, how you win football games. The big football Good, game. There's uh, a lot of coaches that don't. But. Yeah. Jack, I'll pass on your kind words to our comrades at the Texas Ten <laughs> Coaches. Um, I don't I don't think you're gonna be in I don't think you're gonna be invited to their clinic. <laughs> Why? I'm an offensive guy. I'm not supposed to give them any honor and praise. <laughs> okay. Not part of championship. Okay, I understand. Jack's out for himself. <laughs> All right, Doug, what's the next one? Uh, we we brought up Ron Lou. People are calling for it now. Yeah, let's do it. Let's go through Ron Lou. You got it. Let's do. All right. For us, we use the Ron and Lou in a three by one set. Um, we consider it a man scheme that converts the slide versus certain fronts or with an alert call. Um, and again, that's because we're a Molly team, and I know Jack is vertical setting and keying on the inside backer and. And we can, I'll show diagrams, and we can show both ways to do that. Um, generally, it's a call protection to the three-receiver side, and the back aligns away from the call. This is how we taught our guys. So in our trio, the back is away from the trio, so we're always sliding the protection um, to the trio here. Yeah, to the trips, yeah. It's a dual and read to the trip side. Dual read to the trip side. And the offensive line has the dual read now instead of the back. Um, the tailback usually has a single read, and if we get an alert, we'll have him scan both sides. Um, versus the four down, Ron and Lou is exactly the same as Ram and Lion for us. Um, against a four down, um, a four two look, it's exactly the same. Against a three down is where it changes, or a four one look is where it changes. And, and at Ramapo, we keep that pizza principle where we're going to exchange bumps and, you know, we're going to exchange all the twists and cross blitzes. So if we got an ace front, which you have up here in the, you know, a single 4-1 look, the back's now got the single read on the, on the linebacker to his side, and now the offensive line has the dual read to the trio side. Because we want to put the dual read to where the quarterback is looking. All right? And that's the key point. That's why you, we feel like we need Ram and Lion and Ron and Lou is because now we want to make sure that the dual read, if they bring both guys, the free guy is coming off of where the quarterback is looking, which is to the trio side. So at Ramapo, we ask the center to Molly. All right, he's going to take a vertical set as he's looking at the mic. If the mic drops, he's going to head out and block that Sam linebacker. All right, if the mic were to come, we'd step up on the mic and we'd let the Sam go free. Jack, you want to talk through how you would handle that with your vertical set? Yeah, it, basically, and, and I've done what, exactly what Drew's doing, so there, there's no problem with that protection. But I found it easier when, when I was bringing – I'm just going to draw in here a little bit. Yep, hang on one second. I'm switching over to you right now, Coach. All right. Oh, I can't so, use Drew's slide then, can I? No, no, just click – no, you can't. That's okay. All right. That's a technology flaw, Doug. That's minus one point. <laughs> 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 oh man! Hey, you think you think Doug's a geek? You I think Doug's Doug. a geek? We were on the phone today with these guys that are going to make our they're going to make our e clinics even even way better. 
and this guy kept calling himself a sales engineer tier two. And I said, dude, you're just a super geek. Just just get it working so we can so that the video will never be choppy again when we show it on That's our great. e -planets. Basically Drew had a four man front. We got two ones here. That's okay to just use this picture though. All right. And just for purposes, so let's say Drew, didn't you have the back on the left? Right, I have the back on the left. Yeah, let's just I say this draw is the back. this picture, Jack, for you if you'd like. I'll draw what you're saying. Uh, on yours? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm okay. I think this will work for right now. Just pretend the back's not here for everybody who watch this, okay? He's gone. But basically, here's what's happening. He's here. He's here, okay? When he comes back, Drew mollies him, okay? He reads one to two. What we do is the same thing, but here's why I why I did what I do, okay? And one way is not better than the other, but when I got back and I had everybody here at the same level, okay, and he left me, I didn't have to have a lesser athlete try to maul you out. Now, I've seen Drew Center. He's got athletic center, so I'm okay. But sometimes we're not all blessed with all the pieces, right? But I can guarantee you I could get him back, and when that guy dropped, he could bang the piss out of him. And now that would push his eyes here. It's the same thing as a molly. When you get in depth, everybody's mollying to me. You know what I mean, Drew? Everybody's playing a little deeper than normal. Right. And that's why we get away with it. And that's why, you know, when I was at Mississippi College, we gave up six sacks on the whole season. We led the country in it. And and, and it's it, it's just having a system the guys buy into. We're covering the same exact guy, Drew, is. it's just different ways to get there. You know, and if, if you get you guys to – to buy in, and you got the coach that knows exactly what he wants and has the answers. I don't care how we do it. You know what I mean? I I I always I've had bad jobs. I'm sure there's some guys on this webinar right now that know bad means bad coaches because <laughs> no matter what the product is. So when we're playing with lesser and inferior players, we, I I'm just big on covering them up, man. I just studied the NFL statistics and. It was just easier for me to slide him over and cover him up than instead of him coming out. And now look at all – this is this is my – Drew, this might be the number one reason why you'll ever consider this. If I take the center out of the equation, that guard now has from right here to right here that that guy can go here or there. And he's got him no matter where he goes. Okay? But if I take a vertical set, Okay, and that's my cylinder, and that's my cylinder. Okay, I didn't leave my cylinder. My eyes are still here, and my cylinder, I wish I moved him just a little bit more. Okay, and I moved my cylinder. The only gap is, is right here, but that guy's going to come off late and get him. Okay, if he doesn't come, now that means the only other way they're going to blitz is to bring him with edge pressure. Well, that tackle says alert. Okay, and when he says alert, my guard now knows that he drops, hey, there's something crappy going on over here, so scan out here with me, and I'm going to slide over and take it. So I just like the idea. The, number, the, the thing that always told me, if I'm a linebacker and I see that big gap right there, I'm excited, right? That's when they get jumpy and they, they think they're going to wiggle around and get around them. Well, how do you think this guy feels, this guy right here, when he's got to cover from right here to right here? That guy has all that room to make that decision because I drop a guy out of the box. My, my, I know this. The crappy jobs like William Patterson, SBU, Southwest Baptist, <laughs> even Oklahoma Baptist, okay? That's a lot of space for them guys. You know what I mean? So, if, and, and so my di idea was if I can give the illusion that the gaps are smaller because I vertical set and I stayed in my box, the gaps are smaller. It's not as inviting for these guys to think they can run around and do that. Now, he's got to cover over. He's got the tough job. And if he's in a shade, it's a little bit tougher. You know what I mean? But that's kind of how I looked at why to get back, because I wanted this guy not to have inviting looks, and I never wanted to put a guy on a massive island, because, you know, I go to SMU all the time, and June Jones is a big Molly guy, Drew. You, you would really appreciate June Jones. If these guys... The first thing I saw, first practice I went to, he slanted there, he slanted there, he slanted there, and he spiked all the way into A gap, and he went there. 
and that tackle tried to quick set and had to ride it all the way down in there. I was like, Dad, gum, that's a biatch right there. That was a tough thing. But if I did that and he spiked inside, guess what? I'm sitting in the hole for him. So there's a fine line. You know what I mean? You, I think it's all based on talent level. And, it, it, and a lot of it, to me, Drew, is based on what you said. My own line guy did this, and he can coach it. And I'm all for that. It, it's the guys that are starting out with a new line coach or a lot of rookies up here where they haven't had the time to invest like you, you need to really develop them. That's when I start looking at things like the vertical set. But if I have a good well, line coach, I would never change a thing with that guy. Yeah. And we also think I'll tell you what we did, Jack, that worked well is when we saw the four two, we would always check it back to, to uh Ram and Lion. So we I would get the, the three man slide. So the sure. four two, because of its structure, regardless of call, we blocked it like Ram and Lion. I the like only that. time we really changed the protection was when there was a guy either on the center in a uh, a three down front or a four one look where that linebacker was in the center. I'm with you on that. That's a good and thought. That made it simpler for our kids. Love it. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, a couple things here, coaches. So so um, would you still use Rio Lobo for three step in trio? And then also what about yeah. five step in doubles in dual? Always use the real Lobo scheme when you're in quick when you're any quick game because you your linemen cannot get depth Congrats. on their set. They need to know it's catch and throw. So yes. regardless of trio or dual, you're going to use your your real Lobo for your quick game. Yes. Okay. Cool. And um, and hey, it, and all you asked in dual is could you use Rio Lobo? You could, but why not take the full set and use Ron? It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The system's built to get the ball out on Rio Lobo, and Ron Lou. Hey, I came from a system where it was all it was all Ram Lion. Actually, I'm sorry, it was all Ron Lou. Yeah, it was the all Ron Lou. The dual, right. It was Ram yeah. Lion. The back had the dual read. Right? Yeah. It was Ram Lion. So, in in this system, Noel's way more Ron Lou. He would rather. He, Noel's theory is this: he wants to know who's got the quarterback's backside. That's what it's all about. He wants the quarterback to know that the back, your backside is covered. That's what all his protections do. And then he builds the sights and the huts up the front side. Mm -hmm. And he calls Exxon Chevron because he knows what they're doing and beats them at their own game. Uh, another coach. Could you switch back to my screen real quick for just uh, yep. the, the three down front? Yep. And then a coach just, just slip in there while we're changing over. A coach asked if you guys could describe what Molly means. Well, you, you see it here um, in the bottom left-hand corner. So you got a three-down front. So the guy who's mollying is this right guard. So what he's got to do is he's got to get depth to block this edge blitzer if that guy were to blitz. So he's getting depth. But as he's getting depth, his eyes are on the inside linebacker. So he's going to start bailing out and getting depth as if he's going to block the outside backer blitz. But if the inside linebacker comes, he's going to stop and take him, all right? And we're going to take our chances. We're going to read hot off that outside backer. But as he's getting depth, if the inside backer gets depth, he now knows, okay, I don't have to worry about that guy. I'm free to get out on the outside. Now. So that's what we call a Molly technique. In this situation, on the backside, we block it solid, which is an okey call for us, meaning if, if I'm a guard with no – Buddy on me, if I'm in solid protection, I'm going to stay in and block that linebacker. So if you think back to our RAM protections, the tailback was dual reading Mike to Will, and we had a four-man slide. Well, now on Ron protection, because the quarterback's looking over here, looking to his right, we are going to keep this guard on the Mike linebacker or the backer over him, and now the tailback's got the outside backer. So there's no dual read away from where the quarterback's looking. And Jack made this point. The quarterback's backside is protected. Right. Right? We've got a single read for the tailback. And now this guard, if the mic were to drop out of there, what we generally tell him is help the guy who's got his hand between his legs. You know, the center just got done snapping the ball. So we'll usually tell him, you know, unless this kid's a stud, you're going to go and, and we're going to try to destroy the nose and, and double-team him. 
Here's the dual read on the front side. It's coming from the side that the quarterback's looking. The right guard has the dual read or the Maui technique. Get depth because if that linebacker drops, we're blocking the outside rusher. But as you get depth, your eyes are on the inside backer. If he comes, you're going to step back up inside. On a vertical set, Jack, I think you have both the tackle and the guard reading that inside backer. Is that correct? correct? Yes, because he has time because he's backing away from the down lineman. So the tackle can actually sneak a peek on that Sam. But remember, Allowing. if he's coming, if the Sam's coming, he's going to show. You know, he's antsy, too. You know what I mean? He, very few of those guys are just settled in there and then come. You know what I mean? They let you know if you really read their body language. And as I'm backing Jack, up, I have time to look at him. If he doesn't come, I'm locked on that tackle. Boom. So both guys' eyes are on the Sam. If mm -hmm. the Sam comes, the guard picks him and the tackle stays on. That's correct. If the Sam drops, then well, they, now they can fan it. That's exactly what happens. Work. That's exactly it, Drew. Awesome. That's good. Now, when we get the here's a you know a good one. When we do get the alert call. Now they show us that front side pressure, all right? The tackle is covered, and he's got an edge blitzer. So now he knows something's coming. He makes that alert call. The center is going to answer east-east to the right. So now it turns into a four-man slide because now we know we're getting pressure from this side. So we're going to turn it into a four-man slide, and now the back has to know when he gets an alert call that he now turns into a dual read. And he's going to be ram inside out. So it basically, the alert call turns it into ram protection because the pressure is probably coming from the side of the alert. We're rarely going to get pressure from both sides and inside linebacker blitz. That would probably have to be zero coverage and our quarterback may check the quick game there to, you know, to get the ball off right away or he's going to know I, I, zero coverage, you know, one, two, three, I got to get the ball off. Nice. So I got a little mistake here. This was a, a preseason slide. The center should made it made an east call because we're sliding Drew, to the right. That's minus one point. There we go, minus one. <laughs> we're all going down. I'll tell you what, those guys, man, end zone. The protections you guys are putting in this is this is spectacular, man. The, the, the changes that are coming are, are really good. Um, quick question for you guys though, from from a coach, when you're when you're installing. How, what what protections are you starting with? Kind of give them a little progression. Rio Lobo, Ron Lou, man. That's, and then what you want to get to is empty protection. You want to get good at – if you get good at Ron Lou, you're going to get good at empty because mm -hmm. it changes one guy. It's hot Ron, hot Lou. That's what RNL protection is. Get good at Rio Lobo, get good at Ron Lou, and as soon as you can, get into empty protection. Wouldn't mm -hmm. you say, Drew? Absolutely. Uh, when you think about you it, we really empty, only empty. have two protections. Yeah. And that's everything why else is either real, you know, it's either the real Lobo family and you're, you're blocking it that way, or it's the Ron and Lou protection. Um, and those are the only two that we really have. Everything else is a variation of, of the real Lobo or the old random line. Yep. It's simplifying it down, man. All right. Here, the next question is, if a team is really working hard to blitz you at your back with an overload, can the quarterback check the coverage from Ron to Lou? The problem becomes is you're balancing your routes now. Um, you you got to get your tailback releasing yep. the other way. We 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 tried that in one ball game, um, and it 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 messes with your tailback's check release a little bit. It can play be faster. Done. You just got to have an answer for your tailback. Try to play faster, right, Drew? Because if they're really setting up, if they have that much time to really set up, I think we need to look at our operation time a little bit. Would you think maybe? Absolutely. Get get it moving quick. Yeah. Okay, and how do you do that? You get into real Lobo, right? Start playing fast. Start throwing some screens. Mm -hmm. Do to run Zorro. Get them off balance where the defensive coordinator is not comfortable. <laughs> that he can get that in the game. I'm going to tell you this. I met Drew last, well, I met him before that, but Drew puts a lot of time in, and there's no secret why Rambo wins. And, and he took over a program, was good, and then he, re, 
It was down, and he rebuilt it into something great like it had been. That there's no miracle cures in the system. The guys that really put time into into this and know it, you know, Drew came up to Connecticut and watched us in camp. Then we went to his place and came to camp. Drew followed us. Drew was picking our brains all the time between drills, between practices. We were up in his film room. This didn't just happen for Drew. Drew put a lot of time in. And sometimes I think we think if we pay $1,000 for a system, I'm going to have answers. You have to invest your time and make your coaches and I, I really believe this when I was a high school coach and I had really good success guys but here's the deal I had two other guys that bought in just as hard as I did and I let everybody else just coach technique and us three guys dominated the practices every day because we cared and we put the we put the work in you gotta have some guys following your lead that are excited about something different and trying to have answers Drew was asking us questions that were ahead of where he was because he was already thinking, okay, if they do this, what's the answer? And then he went back and watched the film and he figured out what we were talking about. I'm pretty sure that's what happened a lot, didn't it, Drew? Absolutely. And, uh, again, the system is a great, you know, the, the website is a great tool for you to use, but, but you gotta, you got to learn it. You know, you got to put it into your brain and, uh, and spending the time with it and drawing it up over and over again. I, I think the forums have been great. I've uh, I've noticed how many guys are really, you know, jumping on those forums and asking great questions. And, you know, guys that, you know, are even new to the system are starting to contribute. And uh, I, I think if, you ha if you're not on the forums, it's a, it's a great way to, to think football and to, to stay active with it. And uh, it, it certainly helped me a lot. Hey, Doug and Nate, as we're wrapping this up here, I, I'm going to do a Ron Liu whiteboard or, or, you know, presentation so you guys, I'll finish this one off. I'll put all the clips in. I'll talk through it with the arrows. Doug, you'll have to help me set up so I can set up and talk into this thing. Mm -hmm. And we'll get that up really quick with the wrong That'd be loop. great. And then, and Jack, if you could use the term for lesser inferior players, if you could just use the term Willie Pats, then we'll be good. <laughs> you got it. That, that's going in the lexicon. I take it those guys aren't clients right now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. No, Not that would yet. be awesome, Jack. Thanks for doing that for us. Um, a one, a time for one more. Yeah, the, there is some time we we can finish out here on on Ron Lou a little bit. I will say this: I'm going to throw this in for all the coaches on. We've had a couple questions. So as far as playing fast, I will tell you guys right now, not even going into the system content, if you go into the e-clinic schedule right now and you go back to, I, I would go at it this way, Coach Mazzoni on 5-1 talk quick game, and then I would drop back to tempo and sideline communication and then work your way up through most of those. The, I mean, I'm going to tell you right now, we've had five e-clinics where we've had tremendous presentations on speed. And just playing quicker, utilizing the system to play fast. And then for your offensive line to keep up, if you go back into the system content and you go into the position techniques and go to O-line fundamentals, and at that point stage, you, you guys really learn the vertical set techniques. I think there's five pieces that Coach has done for us in the last two, three months. So if, if you guys can get good at practicing those and put them in place, I'll guarantee you you'll play a lot faster. A yeah. lot faster. Hey. Let's let's go ahead and wrap up tonight. That this has been really really good, and Jack's going to do the Ron Lou thing, and I know we'll probably have Drew on another time.